Hey, what is happening, Bulls and Bears? Back with another dose of economic reality. My name is JJ. You're watching Bull, Boom, Bear, Bust. Today is Wednesday, June 7th, 2023, and we've got a lot of news to get into today as usual. First of all, I got a message, a couple messages, that sounded very similar. JJ, where's the meltdown? You've been saying meltdown for years. No, I haven't been saying meltdown for years. And that's the scary part. The meltdown hasn't even really gotten started yet. This is just leading up to the meltdown. All right, the meltdown could happen any day. You could wake up. Uh, if we see an outage uh, in the system here for just a couple of days, you're talking tens of millions of people starving. Uh, no one is self-sufficient. Everybody dependent on swiping plastic, uh, living off plastic, buying things at the grocery store. Nobody grows their own food anymore. Maybe a fraction of 1% of the population. I'd have to say maybe one maybe 0.01% of the population is self-sufficient as far as food goes. And the more unstable the system gets, the bigger the risk gets. And that's the problem. I wish this would have already melted down. Uh, I wish the meltdown would have already happened and we'd be on our way to maybe building something more stable and more sound and sustainable. But instead, it's just more debt, more debt, more debt. And you don't need much um, more evidence. I mean, look what just happened. They had to suspend the debt ceiling. That means unlimited debt for the next couple of years, nearly two years. Uh, normally, you just say, okay, we're going to increase it by $2 trillion. We're going to increase it by $3 trillion. We'll have another vote. No ceiling. They just suspended it. Now, 2025, the end of 2024, uh, 24, early 2025, they're going to have to see what happens. But why would you need unlimited debt? Why would you have to completely suspend the debt ceiling? Not just increase it, completely suspend it, right? Uh, so unprecedented things are happening and you've got to, you know, just understand basic economics to see where we're headed. Uh, the meltdown hasn't happened yet. You could wake up one day uh, and all these banks that are basically insolvent. I think all the banks are insolvent, uh, but it depends on what your bar is, what your definition of insolvent is. To me, um, not having the money in deposits that you loaned out, to me, that's insolvent, right? So let's say you loan out $200 million as a bank and you have a million in deposits. Uh, to me, that's insolvent. It's only a matter of time before one, people start withdrawing money and you have no money in reserves and you're basically zero, uh, or uh, people start defaulting on their loans. We haven't really seen that yet in housing or uh, automobile loans uh, to a big degree. I mean, they, they've increased, but we haven't really seen the meltdown yet. We haven't seen the surge in defaults yet. But it's just a matter of time. You know, this uh, can take a long time to play out. I've often compared it to a frog in the pot. Where the frog's in the pot, the temperature's gradually rising, as in water heating up to boiling. And finally, it gets close to boiling, and the frog realizes what's happening. And by then, it's usually too late because he's already, he's already in sizzle mode. You know what I mean? So uh, I think a lot of people, that's where their mind's at. I mean, that's uh, a pretty good analogy, I think. Um, but to those that think the meltdown is happening and that I'm, you know, saying the meltdown's here when it's really not, no, the meltdown hasn't happened yet. So think about that right now. It's just debt on top of debt on top of debt. Uh, consumer debt continues to explode. Let's talk about that and a few other things here. Uh, first Ray Dalio here. This is out of Bloomberg U S at the beginning of big cycle debt crisis. That's Ray Dalio. Hundreds of different economists out there saying that this whole thing is going to melt down at some point. Um, the Telegraph out of London here, the charts show that the property downturn is just beginning. So let's talk about that. Obviously, the UK, that's where the Telegraph is out of. The United States, sales now have plunged. Uh, prices have not yet plunged. They've dropped some. But right before the 2007-2008 housing bust, remember, sales plunged. Why? Because home sellers are still in denial mode. They're still in denial mode, and it doesn't help you have a lot of the uh, real estate companies out there reporting, oh, this is just a temporary dip in prices. Prices are going back up, and maybe they are going back up because you have these last-minute um, desperate loans. You have this 1% loan program now out of um, Quicken Loans or Rocket Mortgage, basically what, it, what they call it now, and um, you know, a 1% down payment. They pay uh, closing costs. There's another... Um, helping hand in there to help first-time homebuyers get into a home. A first-time homebuyer getting into a home right now 
uh, very dangerous unless you're a big income earner. I mean, some people will be just fine, but most people, when you look at the amounts of debt, most people are not in a very good position to buy homes um, at today's prices, but they're trying to get people into the door. Um, these down payment assistance programs. Um, so we'll have to see how it plays out here, uh, but I don't think we're going to get out of 2023 without some sort of real estate, uh, the beginning of the real estate correction, that's for sure. Uh, let's talk about China. China's exports plunged by 7.5% in May, far more than expected. Well, think about this. Who's the number one country or what is the number one country uh, that China exports to? Ta-da, it's the United States. So why is it, uh, why is, why are exports declining 7.5% if everything's doing wonderfully, there's no problems, there's no sign of any uh, distress in the economy? Maybe you can let me know down in the comments. Credit card debt surges even as interest rates hit record high. More people living off credit cards. They would not be able to survive without more credit card uh, credit availability. Um, but where does it stop? We're already seeing the beginnings of the banking meltdown. We haven't seen any banks fail for now for over two months. Um, but do you think that's the end of it? Or do you think pretty much all the other banks are also insolvent? We just haven't found out the truth about it yet. Um, let's talk about the cost of living here in California specifically. Uh, but this is a, a problem over much of the country here in the United States. Renters dominate California. Uh, many people, or very few people rather, live alone. So I see it all the time. I see people working two jobs with two, three roommates just to try to make the rent. Um, you drive by some of these apartment buildings and there's cars just lined up around the street because most apartments just get one or two parking spots and that third or fourth roommate, they have to park on the street. So you see just streets lined with cars. And um, you know this has been happening for years, but it's getting worse. And uh, I don't know what's going to happen with the rents when people can't pay. But remember, they just recently uh, lifted the moratorium in L.A. And actually, if I did a search today, maybe they put it back in. But the last I read, they had lifted the moratorium. So people are going to have to start paying their rent. Uh, student loans now are going to have to start paying their student loans back. See what's happening here. So just because you haven't seen the meltdown yet doesn't mean that it's not coming. Because there's a lot of things that are just just recently in the past month look at the student loan thing just in the past month that was announced that these student loans uh, are going to have to be repaid it was part of the whole uh get rid of the debt ceiling deal debt deal so to speak um los angeles times lays off 13 percent of its newsroom oh okay uh for those of you denying that there's anything anything wrong with the economy why are so many things laying off we're seeing just more announcements every day u.s trade deficit soared to a record one trillion dollars, folks, one trillion dollars. So how much longer are major manufacturing countries like China gonna accept our fiat dollars for, for real items, real goods? Um, it's just insane how many signs are out there. Uh, but we just talked about recently here, uh, just a couple minutes ago about how exports out of China had declined more than expected. So the record deficit, uh, that may be one way that's going to actually uh, shrink. But the problem is we're not exporting very much either. So even though we're not able to afford as much as we used to here as consumers, uh, goods from China, um, the slowdown in exports also could make the trade deficit still get bigger. We'll have to keep an eye on it for you, but I, I think that's very likely uh, to be the case here. All right, now let's shift gears a little bit here to investing. A lot of people here invest in stocks and, uh, Precious metals, I call that investing, uh, even digital assets. Uh, but things are getting more precarious out there trying to figure out where to keep your money. Where is it safe? Is it safe in the bank? Um, a lot of people don't think so. They took their money out of the bank and they moved it to too big to fail banks or they just took it completely out of the system. But a lot of people in crypto, but are you safe? Uh, look at the uh, scandals that have already happened. Look at the, uh, the failures, FTX and more. Now we've got the SEC cracking down on crypto here this is out of reuters uh u.s titans crackdown on crypto with lawsuits against coinbase and binance two of the biggest maybe the top two um platforms for um cryptos and, and digital coins and a lot of people just hold their coins right on the exchanges right on the right on the right on the websites they don't have their offline wallets or anything like that most people actually don't have the offline wallets 
So if these companies go down, uh, your funds are gone. Just think FTX on steroids if this happens. And uh, you think our things are bad now. Just wait until um, they really crack down. You see, they don't want um, people competing with their fiat currency. That's, that's the way I look at it. So be careful where you keep your money. Be careful where you invest. Uh, keep stacking up on canned goods because the meltdown could begin any day. I mean, I think it's already kind of a slow motion collapse is what I've been calling in here. So it's good, though. It gives us time to prepare, a time to get ready for what's happening because Great Depression 2.0 uh, could be right on our doorsteps. I know Nobody knows the exact timing of this thing, but the direction things are headed, all this news, all this evidence, all this data points to one direction that things are going to get much, much worse. You haven't seen anything yet. Actually, now... Uh, I would I would call what's happening now is the good times or the calm before the storm. Um, but that's good. It gives us more time to prepare. Uh, prepare. And uh, I think even this month in June, something big could pop uh, or drop or break, whatever you want to call it. You know, the beginning of the uh, of the plunge could happen anytime, folks. So keep stacking. Uh, be careful what you do with your money. Um, think about your retirement. And um, you know, we've got some news coming up about. Uh, the retail sector in our very next report is going to be very, very interesting. We'll talk to you very soon. Everybody keep stacking. We're going to wrap this one up. Bye for now. Peace.